Hello guys, I'm Tori. And I'm Carlo. And we're here to discuss the most prominent artist in Russia, Natalia Goncharova. Natalia Goncharova was a Russian painter and a theatrical scenery designer. She was pivotal in the development of avant-garde Russian art during World War I, and thereafter, she was an important and innovative designer for costumes and stage plans. Natalia Goncharova was born in Nagevo village near Tula, Russia in 1881. Her great aunt was Natalia Pushkina, wife of the poet Alexander Pushkin. However, she is remarkable not only because she is the namesake of her famous great aunt. This woman is also the only female artist in history whose work set the record price at the world auction. She studied at the Moscow School of Painting, Sculpture, and Architecture in 1898 to 1902, where she completed less than four years of study instead of the normal 10 years. And also, she met her life partner, the artist Mikhail Larionov. Having abandoned sculpture in favor of painting, she absorbed pastel drawing from Larionov, as well as watercolor painting and oils. Goncharova began exhibiting in Moscow in 1904. Two years later, she participated in Sergei Diaghilev's exhibition of Russian art in Paris. The Cyclist It is a futurist painting in 1913 made by Natalia Goncharova. It's an oil painting in a 78 by 105 cm canvas. In this painting, Natalia Goncharova was initially inspired by Russian folk art, and she often incorporated traditional motifs into pictures styled in a cubist manner. Here, the cyclist's legs and feet have been multiplied, indicating the speed of an object in motion. Rayonism was among a number of completely abstract styles at the time in Western art. Like Impressionism, Rayonism concentrates on the light rays reflecting off objects. Blue Green Forest is an oil painting in 1913. Its dimensions are 54.6 by 49.5 cm. Goncharova's Rayoist work may also be understood as a means by which the spectator might glimpse the famous fourth dimension. Color was integral to her approach for colors have strange magic quality. Moscow Street It is a cubism painting in 1909 made by Natalia Goncharova. It measures 65 by 79 centimeters and it is made by oil. In the painting, you will notice the mixture of primitivism and flat geometric cubist shapes. It is one of the greatest 20th century paintings by a female artist. The Flowers It is an oil on canvas painting in 1912. Its dimensions are 93 by 72.7 cm. It shows cubism and futurism. The objects are fragmented into overlapping monochromatic planes that show shifts in perspective thereby introducing a temporal quality to the static image, whilst simultaneously emphasizing the canvas two-dimensionality. Bluebells In November 2007, Bluebells was bought with an amount of 3.1 million pounds or 6.2 million dollars. It is an oil in canvas and it measures 100 by 72.5 centimeters. It is also signed in Latin and inscribed in Cyrillic on reverse. Natalia Goncharova's Bluebells is an important masterpiece of the early avant-garde. In 1910, Goncharova, Larionov, Cubist, and expatriates 
in forming an association of modern artists known as the Nave of Diamonds in order to exhibit their type of modernist expressionist paintings. Donkey Steel Exhibition was held in Moscow in March 1912. It was the first major all-Russian show, meaning all works are from Russian sources. Most of the works exhibited were in the neo-primitivist style. Goncharova's religious art, The Four Evangelists, was created in 1910 to 1911, was criticized as blasphemous and caused a public outcry. Shortly afterwards, the Donkey Tail group is disbanded. She also joined the Blue Rider, which is a group of artists united in rejection of the Munich New Artists Association. It is said that the principle of the Munich New Artists Association became too strict and traditional. In 1914, Goncharova traveled to Paris to produce theatrical designs for Jaguar. On the outbreak of World War I in 1914, she was forced to go back to Russia. But in 1915, Goncharova, Jaguar, together with her husband, went to Switzerland and they began to design ballet costumes and theatrical sets. And they gave up on their painting and focused more on designing. After Jaghilev's death, they do not have a regular work and they are extremely short of money. In 1938, they become French citizens and remained in Paris for the duration of war. Lives in Paris was even harder. Commission was rare so they are forced to sell their paintings from their personal art collection. My husband suffered from stroke and it ended his career and Goncharova suffered from arthritis and eventually contracted cancer. Goncharova died in 1962 and she was buried in the Ivory Cemetery. But her legacy lives on. Her paintings can be found in public institutions or museums such as the Museum of Modern Art, the Tate Museum, Museum of New Zealand, and Maknae Art Museum. Um, one significance niya as an artist is that she didn't limit herself from one design, but it's more on mixed, meron rayonism, primitivism, cubism, and the like. Some artists limit their design, but Goncharova is different. So there was a discrimination of women painters in the past. So Natalia Goncharova for me was a role model back then because she was a living proof that it was possible to be taken seriously as a woman painter and she was considered as the most significant figure in the Russian art despite the discrimination having in Russia back then. Goncharova showed her passion and love for paint during her last years. Um, since she suffered from arthritis, she cannot move her hand. So she painted sitting on her bed with the canvas lying in front of her. Her significance as an artist is that together with her husband, they pioneered two key movements, which are Neoprimitivism and Rayonism. Neoprimitivism is incorporated with Russian primitive folk art with elements of Cubism and Futurism, while Rayonism is a style beyond abstraction, time, and space. She was also one of the main progenitors of pre-revolution Russian avant-garde organizing the Donkey's Tale exhibition of 1912.